all my freaks and geeks, this is the Square Roundtable. I am your host, Chad Singleton, and these are my wonderful co-hosts. Go ahead and introduce yourselves, guys. Dimitri. I am Joshua Singleton. Marky, Marky, Mark. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. All right, all right. And look, guys, today we have a very special guest. Uh, with us today, we have the California-based hip-hop artist, D.I.C. Everybody give it up for him. What it do? What's good, my brother? Welcome, welcome. Thank you. What's up, y'all? And I got a nice Man. beer going on, you feel me? Best <laughs> rapper in the game. No, 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 no cap. No cap. No cap. A little bit no of cap. cap. Oh, he over here stunting on us already, man. Came in with the fro. You know what I'm saying? Little, had the beer going on, the, uh, the mustache with the beer combination. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Trying to show out. Hey, that's cool, man. You're, just, you're trying to show out because, you know, everybody here at the school, really except for Marcus. Marcus, you got a little bit of a beer. But other than that, we kind of lacking on the beer <laughs> game, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we all got our own little thing. Like, I'm not going Catch it here, you know, beard here, you know. Exactly, exactly. We just like, hey, you know, we the, we just baby-faced over here. It's okay. You know, I, I ain't mad at it. I've been like that my whole life, so it's all good. It ain't going to change no time soon. At least I'll look young for the rest of my life. I ain't mad at it. <laughs> Silver linings, man. Silver linings. Silver linings. Exactly, exactly. Uh -huh. But but yeah, dude, it's it's nothing wrong, man. With you know the confidence, definitely. You got to tell these folks, you know, I'm the best in the game already. You got to speak it into existence, man. So that's great stuff, and we're just, you know, we're just glad to hear the positivity, man. That's what we all about. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, bars wise, I don't think anybody can compete with me. Drake got the Ghost Rider, so he don't count. <laughs> oh, not oh, Drake. Drake. You know, everybody's Drake. been going hard oh, on Drake, and oh, we're gonna talk really? about that. I want to definitely talk about that later on in the podcast. But yes, like everybody always goes in on Drake, but it's it's just like the thing, like we know it, you know what I'm saying? But still, it's just like everybody's like the music sounds good, so we'll just let it go. But yeah. everybody already knows. When they broke, it. don't fix. <laughs> yeah. Well. Mm -hmm. it, Apparently, at some point, he did try to fix it. Because, I, I mean, you can tell, like, a halfway, like, what was it? When that, um, when that, if you, what's that album called? If you, uh, listening to this, something <laughs> like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, at yeah. that point, I think that's when he got the Ghost Rider, because his whole flow changed. So it was just like, <laughs> 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 but that's just how it is. That was man, but... his best album. It really was though. No, definitely. Like that's that's one of my favorites. But it, like I said, I don't mind the Ghost Rider as long as you know you putting out hits. It is what it is. It's all good. Yeah, but, as long yeah. as the vibe is good. Yeah, <laughs> as long as <laughs> for lack of a better I, I mean, lack of a better term. <laughs> for lack of a better term, exactly. But but yeah, bro. I just want I mean, really to know. Bars. You said what? What'd you say? I said Quentin got bars though. If you listen to his like, personal music, he got some bars. I didn't even know his name. That was the guy that Ghost Rights for him? Yeah, Quentin Miller. Like he did a song with J.I.D. Oh. That's uh, it slaps, bro. Yeah. Now nah, J.I.D., yeah, that's my cool. yeah, J is oh, yeah, the truth, yeah. man. Yeah. Nah. And that's like ain't nobody messing with like Jid as far as like Atlanta rappers, he's like putting Atlanta back on the map, like for real. Like that definitely. Is, he's definitely killing the game in Atlanta. But but yeah, bro, like I really wanted to uh, kind of know about you as a rapper, like yourself, like pretty much uh, for you, when did you know that music was something you wanted to pursue as a career? Like, was it something that kind of happened overnight or did you always kind of know? Like, what was that process for you? Just kind of navigating through trying to find your career, basically, or your passion? I mean, I've been writing music since I was like nine. Like, I've always been in the writing stories, wow. you know? But uh, like I made my first song at 12 and it was on my phone. And like, I was like, oh, this, this sort of goes. So That's what's I up. mean, I didn't really want it to be a career till my grandma passed away, uh, the person who raised me. Wow. Uh, she passed away and I, I wrote a song and it was like the best song I have so far. But like uh, the moment I dropped uh, my song Upgrade uh, three years ago, I knew I wanted it to be something that I could make money off of and get support because um, before she died, she was my only support I had. Like, wow, she's my world. So after she passed away, uh, the comments and the love I got from 
the music I was making was sort of that new support group, you know? So mm-hmm. I definitely gravitated to the the fans that I have, like the loyal people that listen to my music. Yeah. That I think that's what drove me to pursue this as a career and also the money. Like I don't make <laughs> a lot, but you know, mm-hmm. just the fact that one day I can make a lot, that's driving yeah. me to. Of course. No. No, that's awesome. That's good stuff. Um good. No, that's that's really cool. Definitely. Um, just to be able to and I can I know and all of us here, regardless of what career you're in, you could definitely uh, attest to that, that getting paid um, like and for anybody that says that money is not part of it. Yeah. You know, because you got to have a way to support yourself, you know, but getting paid for something that doesn't feel like a job, something that you're passionate about and that you would really do for free and that you have done for free. That's you can't mm-hmm. beat that. You really can't. Exactly. You know, yeah. and and um yeah man that's really cool that uh you know just about uh your grandma she really seemed like you know from what you were saying that she's a really special lady to you man that's you know that's really cool yeah definitely I mean, that you get still like she's my motivation still like if i'm down like i'll just think about her whip up something real quick you know record the song be like this is uh, this is fire you know like that's what's up I mean, that's cool dude yeah, that's cool it. so she's like, definitely like your muse in a way Mm-hmm. definitely like she's she even though she's gone she still holds me together so if without her i would be broken so wow that's that's definitely what's up i know we all have that uh person that definitely does that for us i know for me it's you know my mom you know she's my rock you know what i'm saying like and it's not anything directly related to what i do as a career but just the lessons that you know she taught me and as well as like my brother i know he feels the same way you know, it's like, um, it's that motivation, you know, always there in your corner, you know, and I know mm-hmm. you probably felt the same way with your grandma. It, it's just to have that, um, that like unwavering, system. yeah, mm-hmm. that unwavering support system, like regardless of, you know, what you're doing, just that, uh, that love, you know, it's nothing like it, man. Yeah, yeah definitely. That's, that's really cool. And I know it, and just hearing some of your stuff, because we were just talking about uh, you before the uh, podcast came on. And we could definitely hear the passion, man, in your music. Like, definitely. definitely. I, I actually, yeah. I like your, um, I like your Columbus song, man. <laughs> I was like, wow, <laughs> thank man. you. That's pretty cool, bro. <laughs> no cap. That was just a uh, freestyle. It was Columbus Day, and uh, my homie Carlos, uh, he's from my hometown. Uh, we did one song together before, but he was mm-hmm. like, man, I really hate Chris Columbus. I was like, me too. He was like, let's freestyle about it. I was like, bet, let's do it. So we just hopped on a track and hopped out. I was like, this That's is dope. Up. Love him, man. Up, man? Go, go the hashtag for him on Instagram is Mr. Steal Your Land. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Mr. Steal Your Land. Mr. Steal Your Land. <laughs> but uh but but yeah, dear, see it's interesting how you talk about how um a muse your muse, which is your grandmother, and uh your Columbus rap where it was, the rap was pretty much situational. Yeah. Do you make do you make music do you it will, is your best music more so through a muse or through a situation or like a, a topic? Like, uh, how do you um, like what like what like which do you prefer? What do you think is like your best work? I mean, it really just depends on how I'm feeling. Like, I'm, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it 100 with you. I just mm-hmm. sounded really white, but uh, <laughs> I <I'm> get <good>, uh, <laughs> But I have to be sad to make music. Like, even if I'm making a really, like, dark mm-hmm. song about somebody I hate, like, I have to be sad. If I'm not sad, then the mm-hmm. song won't sound good. But uh, I think it has to be also situational. Like, I have to have a situation to write about. Like, um, I can't just uh, not have something on my brain and, like, be able to either freestyle or write about it because it just doesn't happen like that for me. So, mm, okay, okay, okay. No, I, yeah. I definitely, uh, I definitely understand that because you don't really want to just, and that's with anything. Because I know uh, here, like we're artists, you know, and stuff like that. So when trying to put pen to paper and you don't have inspiration, it's just like you get that writer's block, that artist block, mm-hmm. and that's that's completely mm-hmm. awful for anybody that's like, you know, a uh, um, uh, a creator, somebody that creates content, creates art. We all know that that artist block is the worst crap in the mm-hmm. world. So yes. it, will, it will really like weigh you down, bro. Like 
put you in a funk because that's what I was in a like a like mental creative funk for like I think three months. It was like when the pandemic uh. had happened, and then after my uncle passed, my other uncle got sick. Then he passed. Then the next one passed. But like I had started doing this, and it kind of was like get me out that funk because that writer's block, man. Mm-hmm. It just it's a like big weight on your shoulders like mentally and all that because you'll be like man what's wrong with me why i can't get it like just a few months ago pumping stuff out but now i can't even put the pen down to get two words out yeah like you you know your potential but like you can't reach it because something's in the way so it's like the it's like the dark cloud that's blocking the sun Yes, bro. That's, exactly. That, that is, yeah. that is, that's, that's a great way to describe it. Yes. And and you cannot shake that mess. Like it's just like I swear it's the worst. I can't stand it. Like I've I had it um recently just trying to draw something for Inktober and I'm just like balling the paper, throwing it ball because I'm just like, dang, I cannot get this. Like, so it's I understand how it is, man. Yeah. Like, and it's um and and basically like the my stance with um artist block and writer's block is like like uh, like what Marcus was saying, like having new experiences put in your way kind of helps it kind of helps you get out of the funk a little bit. Definitely. Like you have different ways that you can express yourself on different kinds of uh situations. Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the biggest thing is just like even um, and I hate it has to be like this, you know, because of course you know we got COVID nineteen going on, and a lot of people have had to uh, quarantine and stay in the house. But it's really been kind of weird because you get to kind of block out all your daily activities. Like you don't realize how much stuff takes up your day, like honestly, and just having that free time in a way for you know creatives and all that kind of stuff it gives you more of like a free way to express yourself because you have time to do it yeah. you know so yeah so right. i know like how has that process been for you uh dealing with uh having the quarantine and all that good stuff i mean it's actually been pretty beneficial um i released my uh first big mixtape uh good vibes bad signs and uh oh wow uh, 23 songs and i released it for free on youtube and uh soundcloud but um yeah it was 23 songs and i pumped it out in like maybe two three weeks like just writing it all down recording it getting it all together oh, and wow. then uh i also got my first album uh released uh last month uh my brain is drained yeah and it's uh <laughs> that was seven songs but uh four of the songs had features with uh one of my friends white t and then I have another album dropping next month, and uh, it's called The Ville. It's basically uh, summing up my hometown and, like, my story, and that's 20 songs. So it's actually been pretty beneficial, like, just been able to make a lot of cool, man. No, that's definitely cool. Um, I mean, you've been super-duper busy, man. <laughs> like, yeah, they've been putting out content. That's, that's a lot of content, man. Seriously. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah I, it is. I, I, I won't stop. Like there's no quitting me. Like my worth ethic, my yeah. worth ethic for this is unmatched. Like that's I won't let anybody outwork me. And that's the that's the mindset you've got to have, man. Because mm-hmm. and I like to um I won't say it so much because I'm not a person that likes to preach and just kind of go over and over and again. But whenever I do get the time to give somebody advice and just talk to people about you know going after their dreams and going after their passion, you know I I say this all the time. You know like. Uh, uh, failing isn't you know it doesn't inhibit success quitting inhibits success you know so at the end of the day you know if you want to do something nine times out of ten if you keep putting in that work and keep going not you're going to get there you know it just it is what it is mm-hmm. you got to keep but you got to have that passion for it just like you you know you have this time where you're at the house and you know you see it as an opportunity rather as looking at it as a you know a, a, a chance a hindrance exactly yeah. you get yeah. to put your work out there and that's great man i'm you know i'm really happy for you i'm always like glad to see people you know just following their dreams and doing it to the best of their ability man like that's awesome thank you man that means a lot and like i said like my worth ethic it won't be matched by anybody so just thank you for that thank you for appreciating that that means a lot oh yeah 
Of oh, course. No, you're welcome. hundred percent, man. Um, but I would like to know as far as, uh, cause I always find it interesting whenever I get a chance to talk to an artist because everybody's different and having this platform has definitely helped me see like all kind of walks of life. And we've talked to different artists and musicians and I just wanted to see like what your process was like are you a type of person that you put your lyrics down first and then you build your song off of your lyrics or are you a you know music person do you like to have a set like beat or a rhythm that you just build your lyrics off of like what's your whole creative process when making a song it depends if if i'm making my own beat then normally i'll have to be like i'll have to feel the vibe like if i'm outside or if i'm like in a dark place, then, I mean, it just all depends, but um, I definitely have to hear a beat first. Like, uh, I can't just, uh, like, write it off the dome onto a piece of paper, and I can't write my lyrics onto a piece of paper. I have to have oh. my phone in my hand writing it. Like, I've tried to write songs onto a piece of paper. It just don't work for me. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow, that's interesting. Yeah. But, oh, were you going to say something, Josh? yeah. So, oh, um, but yeah, but yeah, yeah, so you were talking about um, like uh, the names of your album and stuff. How, what's your process with naming your album? Like, do you base the name off the vibe of the album or the other songs on the album, or do you just uh, name the album first and then go about naming the songs? Like, how does that work? I mean, it depends. Um, if I have like a set of twenty songs and like there's a vibe to the EP or the not the EP, but the mixtape or the album, then I'll name it off of whatever the vibe is. Like with The Ville, um, every song is me talking about my story, where I'm from, and the people from my hometown, like my enemies oh. and my friends. But if it's like a like a seven-song album, like My Brain is Drained, I literally uh, I came up with that on the spot. Like I was like, what do I want this to be called? And then I was like, well, I feel really tired. <laughs> like I've been writing so much I feel really tired so I was like my brain is drained and I was like that's perfect so I mean it just depends like if it's a big project then I'll, I'll try to make it more meaningful with the name but if it's just like uh, me throwing songs together I'll just put something funny like I like something that grabs people's attention oh yeah, yeah. that's definitely important mm -hmm. like a hundred percent like I find uh, that I I don't know. It depends on, it really depends on the, uh, the genre too, but I love like a song with a great title. Like, you know, you have so many artists that use like the same title. Like every time I see a song title one, like I'm gonna listen yeah. to it. Like I just love, I don't know, just certain titles just ring, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Before you even listen to the track. And I think that's uh, an important thing that a lot of people don't talk about. Cause it's like, before I even listen to it, you know, if I'm looking at it and it the title doesn't resonate with me, it's just like uh, I might not even give it a chance. So I'm sure that's yeah. a I'm sure that's a huge thing when you're coming up with your music, trying to be like, okay, so what title is gonna work? What rolls off the tongue? You know that sort of thing. What's well, like catchy? You know, mm -hmm. like because album titles are like where it's at. If your album title, not only the artwork but the like the actual name itself is where it's at. Like. Your artwork could be cool, but if the title's like not even really like interesting, I'm be like, eh, I don't know. So everything like go has to come together. Well, that's, why I, that's why I love like all the like outcast albums because like mm -hmm. the, the titles and the covers are like like off the wall. Like when I the first time I seen AT Aliens, I was like, what? How did they get like AT <laughs> yeah. Aliens? Yeah. And I was, <laughs> that's just all the then there's like songs on there like Jezebel, uh Babylon. Uh, like when you see the songs, the Cater Palms, you be like, bruh. What is this like, about? Is this? <laughs> <laughs> and then yep. they go and drop a Quimini after that. And uh -huh. then it's even better. I was like, bruh. <laughs> yeah. It's like when you, when you got those those albums and you know, that's just like too with like writing a story or coming out with movies and stuff. When you got that title, you know, that punchline, it just catches, you know, the attention of the audience. And they don't know what it is, but because they see those few little words, it triggers off that idea in their head. Like, oh, my yeah. imagination is going to go here. Whether it's going this way, I'm just going to see which way we meet. 
So it's awesome yeah. to see that, man. That, that's what I love about all kind of art, music, everything. Seriously. Yes. Definitely. Right. And on my brain is drained, I got a freestyle song called Bacon in My Hennessy. I mean, that's what makes you nauseous, but like this, the freestyle is really me talking about one of my homies from Stockton. Uh, he was trying to get with this female, and I was just like rapping about it. <laughs> and like, I was like, what should I name this bacon in my Hennessy? And like, it just fits the vibe perfectly. That's yeah, what's up. Right. Yeah, that's what's up. But, but, but yeah, um, it's definitely important that you have to uh well the 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 uh, the logo the logo of the, the logo of the album and the name of the album has to coincide like your album shouldn't be called spider-man but the name but but the but the image of it is iron man it doesn't make any sense nobody, nobody's <laughs> gonna click on that i would definitely click on that though that's like yeah this is see why they called it spider-man but like you the Iron Man title. Like I feel like, oh, what's going on here? It's like the whole album's on the DC universe. <laughs> yeah, right. That would be crazy. First title song exactly. is like Batman. Right, exactly. <laughs> that would be such a diss. That would be such a diss for Marvel. Just like name your your album the name of a Marvel superhero and all the tracks DC. Like that would be yeah, crazy. Right. <laughs> but, but yeah, um, <laughs> But yeah, so uh, I I'll be honest. Like when listening to music, and that and it kind of caught my ear earlier when you were talking about the type of music that you like to write and the type of vibe that you like to have. Because I can't really speak for the majority, but I'm guilty. Like I love sad music. Like I feel like sad music has like the greatest vibes. Like for uh, example. Um, I am scared of what Adele's new album is going to sound like because she's happy. Like, I, you know, I, I love, know, right? She needs to be fresh. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, I love all her yeah. sad I know that albums. sounds terrible, but it's the truth. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's the truth. Yeah, it's the it truth. Be like, talk about a new dog. Right. It's like, what are you Definitely. going, what are you finna talk about? So <laughs> it's like, <laughs> no, first <laughs> off, like, I'm happy and I'm cool about it. Like, right. Right. It's just, and, but um, like so, I I'll, I'll go ahead, uh, Josh. Yeah, and uh, and speaking of a uh, sad boy music, oh, um, <laughs> but uh, but I've never heard any uh sad trap music. Um, uh, what what what? How about you, DIC? Have you ever heard of um like some trap music that has like a that has like a more of a uh, melancholy sound to it? Like, what's your definition of trap music? Is it like trap beat music, or is it like? Trap music where they're talking about they got a bunch of bricks, but they're sad they got a bunch of bricks. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, wait. <laughs> that's, a of bricks. that's a song right there, bro. I'll listen to that. <laughs> yeah, I will listen to that too. But yeah, like, sad, like oh they got God. a bunch of bricks. Or like, yeah, I'm sad, but I have all these bricks and I have all these clothes and I have all these cars, like stuff like that. But I'm still upset. Right, but I'm still upset. Like, I'm not happy. <laughs> y'all gotta, y'all gotta, yeah. listen to, y'all gotta go listen to Ti on trap music because he got some songs on there that's like, like trap. What he talking about the trap? Like my favorite song on that is "Be Easy," because even though it's like a kind of upbeat song, it's kind of yeah. like a sad song because he's like telling you know the realism of like what that kind of life could do to you. You know, like don't get too far ahead mm -hmm. of yourself and try to become this because it could end up like this, you know? And, like, even – I would even say, like, TLC made, like – it wasn't a trap song, but, like, Waterfalls, you know? That tells yeah. you, like, oh, yeah, the realness of stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, another good song, like, one of my favorite songs, and it's like a – it's you can put it in that category, like, sad music. But Blackberry Molasses by Mr. is, like, one of my mm. favorite songs, my R and B songs, and this and this that's an Atlanta based group too. And oh, wow, it, I didn't know. Like that. it's kind of like a hip hop, like R and B vibe, and they're just talking about like the world around them, and you know how they feel like they have nothing to you know wake up to and look forward to. And when you hear music like that, like you said, Chad, it's crazy because even though it's sad, in some ways it makes you feel better because. You need something that's real 
that you can relate to and pull from Thank instead of somebody you. telling you to be happy exactly. all the time. Because that's not real. You can't be happy every day, you know, you wake up. So yeah, exactly. I, definitely, I definitely appreciate music like that because it kind of grounds you and then, you know, it makes you think about what's going on around you. Right. Exactly. Like, never, like, it's like you feel better about your situation if other people are going through it with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially if they're like, you know, celebrities. Like, you're like, oh, okay, well, you're not that, you know, we're not too far away from each other. You still go through some crap, too. Right. Oh, oh yeah, you know, celebrities are just as much as people as anyone else. Exactly. You know, yeah. even if they always are talking about, like, happy stuff and how much they got, like, all these mo- all this money and cars and they can do whatever mm-hmm. they want, it's good to hear, like, that every so often, like, oh, okay. But, yeah. You know, you're, you're like us, kind of. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. But um, but yeah, DIC. Speaking of um, different artists and stuff, and and uh, and and celebrities. What are your uh, what are, what are some of your biggest influences in rap? Um, I know I was just hating on him, but I noticed this the other day. <laughs> uh-huh. It's Drake. Like, this <laughs> yeah. yeah, I feel it. I feel it though. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm low key yeah. ashamed to admit it because uh, like. The way that he's so confident to be able to sing about sad stuff, like, I think that's where I get it from, because most of my music is me talking about the sad stories, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and being able to talk about, like, making music for females, like, that is my specialty. (laughs) So, (laughs) like, just, uh, I think it's Drake, but if I had to pick, like, two more, I would say Mm -hmm. Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole, easy. Okay. For all sure. right. All For right. Sure. Yeah, okay. yeah. For sure. Yeah. Nah, nah. Good. I'm a. Um... You are good with me. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a pretty. That's a that's, that's a pretty good lineup. Yeah. yeah that's, okay. that's a Great. good lineup. Impressive. Yeah. Impressive. But look, B, I'm a, I'm a rock the boat a little bit. So, uh, J Cole or uh, Kendrick, which one oh. out of them two? I'm a rock the boat. <laughs> Can I like give like a two-part answer for this or just like yeah, you know, yeah right? give us as much you can dude as much as you want yeah, yeah. all right well for lyricism i gotta say kendrick because kendrick can talk about anything and make it just so wordy but okay. for like the vibe it got to be j cole because if you listen to neighbors and then you go listen to love yours i don't think kendrick can do that like kendrick got uh, mm-hmm. kendrick got wow. love you know with rihanna but mm-hmm. that doesn't give you the same feeling as love yours and neighbors like those are just two different vibes you know yeah yes 100 yeah, percent. no I, I, I that's, just, that's a good one there's no comparing yeah. those two. it's like trying to compare tupac to biggie smalls in a way like tupac is j cole and biggie is more of uh kendrick because yeah. biggie can get like talk about real stuff but tupac can be like talk about something sad and just Give you the vibe of it, you know. I will have you crying right. if you if you if you get <laughs> no, of, like like Brenda's got a baby, dear mama, like stuff like that. You be over there like, yeah, huh? Mm. Like, <laughs> Stop all that me. crying, Marcus. Oh, oh, my oh, man, oh I had to put the biggie on the start, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hype, you get hype and get all hype yeah. and stuff. <laughs> For real. Then you really? know, wonder why they call you bitch, and then next thing you know, you're like, oh dang. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. It's just like, and and you're right, like saying um that you can't really compare the two because truly, like they serve two different purposes. But yeah. in their own right, yeah, they're in their own rights, yeah, they're definitely crazy. But uh, specifically, and I'm glad you mentioned Drake because one thing. I was actually thinking about this the other night when kind of doing um, research for this particular podcast. Like the one thing that I really liked about him was that he kind of paved the way for not just particularly singing on tracks, you know, like, yeah, people say that, but I like how he made it cool for guys to be vulnerable on tracks, rappers specifically to be vulnerable and, and not just talk about women in a misogynistic way, but to talk about them mm-hmm. as like, well, I care for you. I'm upset because you aren't into me like that. Like, and talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I, I think that that's really cool. Like, because I, because I know when I heard, um, what was it? Uh, I think it was best I ever had. Like, my mind was blown. Like when I first heard it, I was like, 
I didn't immediately think it was a rapper. I was just like, oh, I, my first thought was like, is this an Amarion song or something? Like, who is this guy? Like, <laughs> I remember that was my first reaction when I heard it. And I'm just like, when I found out it was this dude rapping or this rapper and then just his the whole catalog after that, it's just like, man, you know, you can say you know what you want about it you know that is kind of like whiny or whatever but he really did make it cool for you know guys out here um to be vulnerable and emotional on tracks like if it wasn't for him you know you got guys like now tyler the creator is doing it he doesn't mind being like that on tracks you got you know rest in peace but x you know xxx his early stuff he did that a lot um you know, of course, you got Frank Ocean, guys like this, Gambino, you know, guys that be as silently as is kept because of him, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Didn't mind. It, it made that whole genre a lot uh, more accepting of people being, like I said, more in their feelings, I guess you'll say, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, man, that I, I can understand why Drake is definitely a big influence for you because I, I feel that. I mean, not only because he can rap and sing, like, emotional and, like, then he can go to hard music, but it's also, if you watch his Rap Radar uh, podcast that he did, Mm -hmm. uh, he talks about being the first uh, person out of his country, like, Canada as a whole, like, uh, as a rapper, like, to make it out. Like, he paved the way for, like, The Weeknd and uh, Nav and, like, other rappers like that. So, uh, yep. like, that's my that's what I want to do for my city, you know, because no, don't nobody make it out of Orville. Like, nobody. Like, if you're wow. there, you're stuck. So, hmm. man, you finna be the first, man. Yeah. So, yeah. So make, make that oh, history. Yeah. Change it get up. Out there. Switch, it up baby. Switch it up. Yeah, definitely. And I'm a fan of that. I'm a fan of guys like, and not even just in hip hop. Like, I love dudes that put their team on, like, guys that just like, I came up with y'all and we going all eat. You know, I love because Drake does that. You know, Tyler did that. Even in other genres, like, or other um, uh, other forms of entertainment. Like, that's why I love Seth Rogen so much. Because if you pay attention to him, like, the guys, all the guys that were in um, Knocked Up, his whole team, he really? puts them in every single he loves movie. Like, like, you can yeah. He loves yeah. Yeah. like Adam Sandler too. Adam, Adam Sandler too. Adam Sandler he does, does that for every single one of his movies. If you don't see yeah. Adam Sandler like hit one of his friends in it, you're like, is this an Adam Sandler movie? Because he puts all his mm-hmm. team on. Exactly. Like I yeah, I definitely love that. I you know, and um I'm with you on that. Like uh D, I definitely wanna be that person, you know, that just like that doesn't mind putting on for where I'm from, you know what I'm saying, and helping out those around me, which is yeah. really a big reason uh, that I wanted to hit you up in the first place. Something that really caught my eye about you uh, was your record label, uh, Imaginable Entertainment. Like, I thought that was really cool that you just had a space where you were able to express yourself and also be able to, you know, put others on around you and showcase other artists, you know, that yeah probably any other way wouldn't get uh that type of exposure so Mm -hmm. i just you know wanted you to talk a little bit more just about that whole process and how that whole uh thing went with your record label i mean it was going really good actually i don't i know you were uh, following it a a little bit but um yeah it was going really good and uh i don't really know what went wrong like um there was just a few people in the record label that wanted more than I could give. Like I was releasing music for them for free. Like Mm -hmm. I was promoting it for free. And after I let them go, I still released their music for them and I'm letting them keep all of their, all of their royalties from it. Mm -hmm. But um, there was just a few guys that ruined it for everybody. Like one guy was like, I want to drop my music on SoundCloud. And it was the music that I was dropping on them uh, for them on Spotify. So it's like, if you drop it on, freaking soundcloud what's the point of me dropping right. it on spotify for you you're not gonna make no change they're just gonna listen to free version right. so yeah. i mean it was just them wanting more than i was able to give them and i still got a lot of love for the guys i talked to them still it's just they wanted more than i could give and i do plan to restart the label eventually it's just cool i think i need to be better in a better financial situation before i do that and that's, definitely i'm yeah, going 
that's just like a good learning experience. Just like, you know, like Chad yeah. said, you know, you got to fail to succeed, you know, and learn, you know, from different things. So, you know, now that that's, that's happened, now you're like, okay, I know when I get in this situation, I can do A, B, to plug in C, and then I'll know where I can go from yeah. there. So it, it's all a learning experience. And it's good that it's already happened early on because instead of you getting further down the line and then it happens when you start, you know, building that up. So now that you already had that experience, you know, it's kind of like, okay, I know where I can have my head at. So that's, exactly. that's a good, that's a great learning experience, man. So don't let it get you down, you know, keep it up and keep going with it, bro. Keep pushing for it. A hundred percent. Yeah. Like, Oh, yeah, and we, and we're all proud of you for it, man. We like I, yeah. that's that's great. Like the entrepreneurial spirit that you even had to start a record yeah, label. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that's because yeah. we, me and my brother, we're big on that. We talk about that all the time. Uh, we were actually just talking about your music, um, and we were just like, you know, we really appreciate this guy, man, because there's so many people out there that talk a great game, but they don't put the work in put the work and what, in. yeah yep and what we can see about you you know like because we're fans of your music but regardless of you know what you think of somebody's content or what you think of somebody's you know drive or the end product the thing that matters is that you're doing it you know you're putting mm-hmm. something out and you know you're not just talking a big game you know what i'm saying you actually mm-hmm. have receipts you have something to back it up so even though you know in the end um, it didn't really work out like you had planned to. The cool part of it is at least, you know, you guys are all on, you know, the, a good page and you're still cool with each other and you still have the experience, you know, yeah. like, so, so that's all positive stuff, man. Like kudos to you though. Definitely. Like yeah. that's, that's awesome. Thank you. I mean, it was not an easy task. Like I was one person managing, uh, what, 15 artists and wow. four producers, hmm. and, like one engineer. So it was just, it was a lot for me to be able to do and just them asking more and more. It was like sort of disrespectful, but I'm not yeah. on that. Like we're all on a good page now. Like we got That's it all good. worked out. And whenever I start the label, there will be a few artists that will come back that was there before. But like you said, I will know which place to make beforehand bef- before it all starts. So Exactly. Yep. And, and if you don't mind uh, sharing, kind of how did – how do you have that idea in your head? Because I already know you wanted to be an artist. So how did you have, you know, the idea to start up your own label? Like, where were the beginning stages of that? Like, how did you even get that ball rolling? Because I know so many of uh, our listeners, there are people out there that do want to start their own labels or they do want to start their own careers and they just don't have the tools and the, and the mindset to be able to do it. You know, so I just, for our, you know, viewers out there, like, what was your process of going from nothing to trying to build this you know empire um i mean i i've always wanted to like own my own like business in a way like i always wanted to be the boss so me owning a record label was always in the cards like i think even before rapping like i knew i wanted to be involved musically i just didn't know how so I mean, I don't really know when the idea started, but I know it was like sometime at the beginning of when I started making music, I had the idea of starting it. And um, it's really not that hard. Like you just got to find the right resources. Like if you don't got, if you're on a budget, Mm -hmm. I recommend, I recommend using a muse because like it's $7 for a a one month of like being able to release uh, music for whoever you want, like uh, up to 20 artists. So if you're on a budget just and you want to do it do it like you know just don't procrastinate just go to amuse pay the 7.99 and just do it and then find your artist on instagram like there's a lot of good artists out there like mm-hmm. use hashtags like you will find the artist you're looking for and mm-hmm. the next thing you know you'll have a full record label and people will be looking up to you asking you for help asking you hey how do i do this how do i do that you know so i mean I don't know. It's like, it's sort of tough to explain that, but like, I've always wanted to do it. And I just woke up one day and was like, I want to do this. So that's what, and one more thing. What is a, what is a, a muse specifically? Like, uh, what is that? Like an, an app or a program or. 
it's a it's a free distribution like they will distribute your music for free to major platforms and if you want it on tiktok and facebook you got to pay the 7.99 but oh okay on a basic like spotify and apple and google play youtube music then they'll uh, release that for you for free but i definitely recommend getting the pro version of that because you have a lot more opportunities like you can promote the music so you can get more listeners and um i don't know it's just a it's a free distribution uh product so they help you release your music oh okay okay and that's that's actually a good point too because uh a lot of people, and I'm glad you explained it, because a lot of people just don't know the tools that are out here. And definitely, um, I know my guys here can attest to that. Like Instagram and social media is such a great like vehicle for you to be able to just reach people, you know, to just get in touch with people in general for specifically the things that you want, you know, and people will respond, you know, like uh, one thing that I've learned since doing this podcast and reaching out to people to come on the show um it's really been a great experience because i've seen that in general people are really really nice and they want to you know help and they want to get themselves out there and they want to help promote you and everybody just kind of wants to in general kind of you know be a part of and yeah. i think that's i think that's yeah. really cool everybody everybody wants to be in the situation where they uh well somebody thinks well somebody appreciates what they do people like to feel special Exactly. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Everybody yeah. wants this feel special. Yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah. Certainly. Everybody oh, yeah. wants to be appreciated for their art. You know, like there's mm -hmm. there's nothing like that. I know, you know, just the instant gratification of social media, you know, when I post something like a drawing I may have done or something my brother may have done, just seeing the people, you know, through the little likes that they like it, you know, that's a that's a great feeling. That's a little bit of an adrenaline rush. I'm like, man, yeah. really? Y'all like that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that kind of stuff, man. So, so it's like yeah, the yeah. ultimate rug. Like, really? Yeah. No, nah, definitely. Like, 100%, man. Um, but we just wanted to say for you, like, everybody here at the Square Round Table, you know, we think that's great because in the, in the, uh, you know, the end result, you know, you put in the work and you got the, you got the result. You know, you were definitely um, successful in having your own record label. Like I said, whatever happened, regardless, you know, after everything, you know, the dust settled and all that, you know, that's just the learning process. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now you know what to do different next time. But at the end of the day, you had a goal and you did it. You succeeded in it. And, right. you know, that's mm -hmm. just, that's great stuff, man. So once again, you know, congratulations on that. Like, good stuff. I appreciate that. Thank you. You're not oh, yeah. starting off like Definitely. fresh, you know, you're starting off from a certain point. You're never starting off completely at the beginning when you do, exactly. when you don't reach where you're supposed to be, because you now have like, you know, things that you know that you have to do and things that will make things better when you do go back into it. So, yeah. you know, just look at right. it that way. I'm yeah. only 18. So like, I could go back to that 25 and be like, all right, I'm ready. So, yeah. Exactly. Oh, See, yeah. there you go. Starting off young, man. Eighteen years old, like on your own record label, like that's that's unheard of, man. That's just, like that's good stuff right there. Like yeah, eighteen, yeah. I didn't know what the hell I wanted to do. No, 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 no. I didn't know nothing. No, nah, nah. I can't even tell you what I was doing at eighteen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, oh. I don't even remember 18. Like, that's, that's I really give, don't. It's I a, don't that's either. Like, like, I was trying to think, like, what was I doing when I was 18? Like, you, you know what's crazy for me? 18 was 11 years ago for me. So, I really don't remember that. Like, it was, <laughs> yeah. it was that long ago, bro. Like, really. So, yeah, he's he's he's, he's, he's old. old. He's old man. He's, he's so. kind of old. <laughs> hey, he's an old, bro. He's old. He's old. <laughs> I'm the senior citizen of the group. Yeah, he like, sure is. Yeah, yeah. Right. But it's yeah. cool, man. But that's you know that's just awesome. You know, to see a young dude like you. You know, you got your head on straight. You know what you want to do. Being positive. You know, you trying to make something out of yourself. You know, even the fact that you talking about Drake and J. Cole and Kendrick, like that I, I thought you was around our age, but when you said your yeah. age it just blew my mind because yeah. guys around yeah, that yeah. age, they don't you know, they don't really draw 
to those guys and that type of music. So it's it's so cool to hear, you know, where your mind and stuff is because really you might be 18, but you like ahead of the game right now as far as like where your head is. So yeah, that's why I always encourage like young guys, you know, when you in that mind state, you you doing the right thing, keep it up. We need more of that because, you know, you are the guys that's going to push us, you know, even harder. So you're going to push me to work harder. And, you know, we need more of y'all around, man. So kudos. Definitely. Doing, bro. Yes. So, yeah. well, that makes me feel special because the fact that I'm knowing that you're going to work harder now, <laughs> that's that's awesome. Yes, man. Yes, yeah. man. All the, we gotta oh, work yeah. together. The, that generation gap shouldn't be so far. You know, it should come it should. together. So yes. yes. Yeah. I mean, you're really not that old though. If you think about it, you still got a whole life ahead of you. So true. thank you, man. And that's yeah. true. That's a good hey. one. You tell me that? Maybe that ain't... Like, I'm like 50 or something. Hey, 30 ain't <laughs> that far off, man. You you know. But yeah, that's that's true. That's a good point, man. A lot of people don't, you know, think about it that way. But yeah, man, like that's a you got a long time to live, man. You know, 18, 20, 25, 30, that's nothing. You've lived no life yet. Nothing. You know, so yeah. at yeah. all. But uh but but yeah, but yeah, DSC, I always thought it was like a really difficult thing to do as far as trying to own a record label and do all the maintenance that it takes, but uh, how how have you done, or how have you planned out the uh, the process of payment or promotion for your artists? Like, right. Um, mostly through PayPal. If they have PayPal, I will link their PayPal to the account that I set up for them, so the money oh. will go directly into their PayPal account. But I will be taking ten percent. You know, I need my cut because I am working. <laughs> of course. I mean, if if you look at the deal that I set out for them, it was they get 90% of their royalties and I get 10% back. Hmm. Like, what kind of deal is that? Like, you really get a good deal no, with that. Yes, yeah, I that's can't really say good no deal. Because you ain't getting that no way. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. People <laughs> trying to take... People, people talking about to taking like 50 to, 50 to 50 to 60% right. of your, uh, your royalties, man. That's what people go right. for easily. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, because in, in general, like the game, um, uh, and that's not even just hip hop, you know, we're talking about uh, rap, con- I mean, uh, uh, rock, country, you know, all this other stuff. Like I've heard plenty of artists, like I remember something uh, with Megan Thee Stallion not too long ago talking about she wasn't really getting paid for her music. Uh, Taylor Swift just lost yeah. out on her her masters, you know what I'm saying? So she doesn't even own her own voice. Like, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, when she you have... She deserves that. I don't like her. <laughs> oh, wow. Came at her with Taylor Swift, man. Came in. Okay, it was like... Hey, a little team, man. How you going to Taylor Swift like that? <laughs> what does she do? So I don't what mean... Hate. Hate. I really don't. I try to keep it positive, but she has just so many guys. Oh. I'm sorry. No, she, she, That's karma. Yeah. She has, she has. She has a lengthy. Yeah. I'll put it this way: like she's the only country artist that can compete with a rapper as far as this. <laughs> like, she got she albums, is. man. She got a whole album dedicated <laughs> to like one dude. I'm like, dang. Yeah. I mean, look, look. Can we just give her like a little bit of props? I mean, she out here disposed like she too fuck, bro. Come on, bro. Yeah. You gotta get and, and with getting yeah. like and getting a good amount of like following from it. Like people are like, right. okay. What are you gonna who are you gonna talk about this uh, this album? Right. Like who's the guy you talk about? They see you. They saw her da- dating somebody new. Like oh, there's another album coming soon. There's another yeah. album. That's what I'm saying. Like what? Right. <laughs> like, exactly. like, well, like uh, she gonna drop that um that DIC this album? Oh right. no! <laughs> I was proud. I was hiding all. Of them. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, bro. Don't nobody want Taylor Swift smoke, bro. She's worse than Drake. I'm telling you, don't Definitely. nobody want. Yeah. Don't I nobody see. want that smoke, bro. Don't I want to see Push T. I want to see Push T versus Taylor Swift right now. That's like <laughs> number one on my goal. <laughs> so, Push T. I, I would pay good money for that. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. cuz she took I didn't think it could happen like when she went off on like Kanye in the sweetest way possible. Like yeah. that was 
crazy. And that song was a banger, bro. <laughs> like, I st- <laughs> I'm just like, dang, dude. Like, how you let Taylor Swift, like, come at you in the nicest way possible, basically saying you ain't no good. And like <laughs> to the most country sounding song in the world. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> like that's the worst Kanye diss I ever heard, man. Like that's, that's wild. He's just but, sitting there with his jaws dropped. <laughs> right. Oh, dang. Oh, dang. Oh, dang. He got me though. <laughs> right. right. But but yeah, man, speaking of like, you know, uh hip hop and just the way is going now like in just in a genre man where you got guys like you know drake just killing the game and then you have like hip-hop which really is continually like becoming more and more indistinguishable from pop you know pop and rap are becoming like synonymous it's just like you got you know billy eilish on songs with you know lady gaga on songs with rappers you got you know so what do you really think about the state of the rap game right now like do you think it's like progressive in a way and do you think that's positive or do you think like uh, most of what made hip-hop hip-hop is kind of like dwindling a little bit like i want to get like a rapper's point of view on the rap game well i think it's if it keeps going in the direction that it's going in it does it's not going to last long and that's just Mm. It's it's just a uh, you know when you got or you know when rap or a music genre has gotten to the point to where the hottest rap song is an old town road song like with Billy Ray Cyrus mm. it's go yeah like Roddy Rich he sounds good but like I just don't like that type of rap like I said I like J Cole Kendrick Drake yeah. like the I think 2016 was where rap hit its peak but it also hit the fastest decline because it's still popular but the quality is just going down and like that's why i make music the way i do like i try to keep it more lyricism like i like i like people understanding what i'm saying and trying to feel what i'm feeling but like with gunna and little baby like people's like little baby's the hottest rapper in the game but like he he spits some real stuff but can you understand what he's saying it's right. like young Paul, he's hot, you know, he got the song called Hot, but <laughs> right. you can't understand what he's saying. Like even Kid Cudi to a point, like I love Kid Cudi, like one of my favorite artists ever, but for sure, it, it just gets to a point, you know, like it's going in a decline. And um, I don't know, like I think if there's like maybe like a crop of miniature like Eminem, J. Cole rappers, then maybe the rap game will like stay at a steady pace and stay up there, but yeah. I just don't like the way it's heading right now. It's it's too commercialized to me. Like, yeah. It's like poppy now. It's like really poppy. Yeah, like yeah. Everything everything is like what sells to the audience that they trying to, you know, aim for or what's going to get more record sales or if this video is going to be like big and colorful or are the kids gonna listen to it? Are women gonna listen to it? Like it's not it's it's gotten way far away from what it was and what it started as. Like you said, it's declining. And you know, that's why for me, I feel like I'm separated a lot from it now because like I hear those names and stuff and I know the music, but I can't sit there and listen to a whole album of it. Like yeah. Because it's like after a while, my mind just blocks out what's going on, mm-hmm. and I just hear a beat. Because even the the beats and stuff are now sounding the same. Because everybody's going to the same, you know, producer, you know, to do their beat. So you might hear the baby do a song, and then Megan the Stallion do a song, and the beats might sound similar. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, where's the you know where's the individ- individuality? You know, like. Exactly. Where's the personality yeah. in the artist now? You know? Yeah. And I it's think like, that's why I think that's why a lot of people don't appreciate, you know, mm-hmm. Kendrick and J. Cole as much. Because, you know, they're like, oh well, they making all that music about, you know, they talking about this and that. But now when the stuff is actually going on, they're like, Hey man, where Kendrick uh drink at? Right. I mean where yeah. Kendrick uh, <laughs> J. Cole at? 
they told they were trying to tell y'all this like five, ten years ago, but y'all didn't yep. want to hear it, you know. Right. Hear that yeah. So, you know, it's it's just yeah. crazy like how how music is like it's going like this a lot. You know, yeah. it's everywhere. It's, so. it's, it's like uh it's like sometimes skill is more important than aesthetic and then aesthetic is more important yeah. than skill. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, like, I just, uh, oh, go ahead, Josh. Oh, oh, I, I was gonna say, like, for example, like you got Kendrick and Uzi. Uzi's more aesthetic based, but sure. he's not as good as a rapper. While Kendrick barely has any aesthetic in a way, but he's a really good rapper. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's I, definitely it. It even J. Cole, like, he sort of gave into like the commercial stuff, like uh, with Middle Child. Like he gave into the auto tune. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. 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 And I was love that song, but I was like, yeah, Cole, you kind of, you kind of crossed yeah. over. With that one, really. Yeah, you he, were he like, back, he came back though, like Snow on the Bluff. Like he came back to. Yeah, like, he came he, back. He got so like, much hate for that song though. Like he got so much hate for that song, Snow on the Bluff. Yeah, yeah. I was like, really. Like, it tells a good story. Like if you listen yeah. to it, it's like he's talking about how, like uh, his fan or his fans are like starting to hate on him now because he's spitting that real stuff and like, it's just like you gotta love it. And if it's it's like the LeBron James situation, like you're 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 gonna hate him until he's gone, and then you're gonna miss him and love him. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And, and that's the thing that that I can't really stand about it because you just. I, I had a conversation about that. Like, it's, I, how can I put it? Because I, I can't, I can see, I can see how the tide shifts. Like, I can kind of see how the Eminem era style of rap can be looked at as dated. I can see that. Yeah. But it's just like, when you say that he's just trash, and to say that about a guy that's like, you know, just lyrically pumping out the dictionary every time he makes a song. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, so, so in the definition of an MC, you know what I'm saying? The definition of an MC, uh, just this guy that's just tearing it up lyrically. And you want to turn around and say that he's trash, but you want to, you know what I'm saying, praise guys that are out here. And like you said, you said it perfectly, like you cannot understand what they're saying. So yeah. in a way, you know, um, yeah, their songs are hidden, but it's only because the beat is good. That's yeah. it. Cause cause I love I'm a huge, 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 huge future fan. I love future, like 110%. Yeah. But my boy don't be talking about nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> he admitted it too. He's like, I don't know what it says. He said, I don't know what it says, but it's dope. I was like, Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. And a lot of times, um, oh, what are you gonna say, Chad? Oh no, I was just I was just gonna say it just creates this weird like dichotomy. Like it's a it's it's just the game right now. It's kinda odd because I like that you can make a career. Like I I think Lil Nas X is amazing. The fact that you could turn uh, a Twitter, Instagram meme into a full blown rap career, that says a lot about where we're at right now, you know, technology wise, you know, it, all of it. You know, I think it's fantastic. But at the end of the day, this man's taking home Grammys, and it's just like, uh, mm. this. Come on, guys! Like, really? <laughs> <laughs> just like, yeah. I, I think it's great, and I love him. But man, you know, it's like, ugh, when you got uh, him and Billie Eilish sweeping the Grammys, it's just like, yo, what's going on? Where are the artists at? Where are these guys? Where are at? It, it's it's them, bro. It's them. I mean, that's yeah. the artist, man. That's what they saying. Screens and all of that. It's that's what's getting these guys all the popularity now, man. It's you crazy. Can make a record, bro. You can make a single and be just big. Yeah, man. If it's hidden, like uh, Old Town Road was hidden, like everybody was playing it over summer. Like yeah. you could really write silence on, silence on that, right? Show. And everybody's gonna play it like <laughs> they like that's they love country cool. now. <laughs> Like everybody was like, man, I like country now. This is really good. Country's so good. I'm like, uh, name five. Right, country music's like, amazing now. Like, no, yeah. country artist, man. You know what it upset me about that though? Everybody trying to act like he the first to do that, but people need to give my dude Nelly the props because he was the first. <laughs> he was the yeah, first. He was the first, uh, yeah. man. He yeah. played a whole yeah. album. So I'm gonna leave that there, and that's the end. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. I mean. <laughs> 
but 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 yeah, y'all. I mean, it just puts in the perspective how you can just do whatever you want to do as long as you just keep doing it. Like, uh, mm-hmm. it, like if yeah. you like 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 I, like I like to say, um, if you build it, they will come. Mm-hmm. Every Straight time. up. Every single time, you know. Yeah, I and, like that film reference, man. You trying to trying to figure <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, come for your spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, well, yeah. do you don't know who Yellow Wolf is though? Oh of course. yeah, of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. That country rap at its finest, like at its finest. Finest. Exactly. That's what you Man, yes, pop bro. the trunk. <laughs> That's Man. my boy. Catfish Billy, bro. That's yes. my guy right there, bro. I don't play no games. Yellow Wolf is my. But once again, yeah. um, D, where is Yellow Wolf? Where yeah, is his where props? Been at? Where... Nobody's giving my boy props though. Like he released a whole album with Travis Barker, dude. Like you know what I'm saying? Like craziness. Like blending genres for real. Like he made a whole mixtape that went unheard, where he just rapped over. Um, like old eighties rock beats, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, and it was just like it went unheard. His first album didn't sell that well, and it's just like this dude is making great music, but nobody's showing my boy props, and he's I don't know. And like, being backed by Eminem ain't really helping him either. Like, I don't know what else you could have. You're, you're backed by Eminem. That's like one of the greatest, man. Like, you should be like, oh well, if he find him, uh, he must be good. <laughs> I mean, I just I don't think people pay attention to Eminem like that. I mean, like he still got it. Don't get me wrong; like he can still pump out a few hits, but yeah. it's just he. I I feel like he's getting tired of it. And he's just doing it for the money at this point. Like he obviously still has love for it, but the material he's he's done so much that it's just it's not as raw as it used to be. So it's not as catchy. Do you think you can just run out of stuff to talk about or age plays a big difference in it? Definitely. I mean, Haley's grown up. You know, we can't be like Haley Jades. It was like sitting at my crib, whoop de whoop. Like, you know, that's not that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Definitely. But oh, yeah. Jay-Z, he can, st- he can pump out an album and it's just all hit bangers. So, I mean, I don't know if age yeah. plays a factor. I just think it's more of you got to have – you got to be completely dedicated. And I know he's completely dedicated, just something's missing, and I don't know what it is. Like, I still yeah. love Eminem. Like, there's yeah, still a few songs. Of course. But it's just something Jay-Z and Eminem, like, Jay-Z still got it, and I think it's just Eminem, just something's missing at this point. Definitely. Yeah. I think I, if I had to pinpoint it, because I like to see, like, what people bring to the table. And I'm not going to say it's a gimmick at all, but it's just like, what is your thing? Like you say that you yeah. like to, you like to make a uh, very emotional, sad music. That's what you like to do. So when people think of your music, that's they're just like, Oh yeah. Okay. When I listen to a, a song by VIC, I know what to expect from his music because this is what he puts out. So I feel like as far as yeah. Eminem goes, like, it's hard to listen to an old man be angsty. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, yeah. cause, you know? cause I, cause me growing up, it's it's a little bit of a difference. But I was a, um, I don't know if you guys were, but I was a big fan of Lincoln Park growing up. Okay. And like, <laughs> you know, right? But a big part of their aesthetic was the fact, and you know, rest in peace, Chester Bennington. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that was. But um, a big part of their aesthetic was just that there were these angry, angsty teens, and they hated their parents, and they hated their relationships, and they were mad at the world, and that was amazing. But how can you? And it's and it's the same thing with Eminem. He was mad at his wife. He was mad at his, you know, mom. He Damn. hated his dad. He you hated know, so TV. he hated it. Right. that didn't like him, he hated him. <laughs> right. So, how, but how can you talk about that at fifty? Like, yeah. he, <laughs> it's kind of yeah. hard. Yeah. Right. He's fifty, and he's still rapping about he, he hates his dad. And it's like <laughs> literally, <laughs> and it's kind of crazy now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, he still has a few things he can rap about too. Like, he's funny. Like, if oh, yeah. he was scared because social media is so big now. Like. Yeah. If he would have released the song talking about, like, excuse my language, but he says a lot. Like, if he was to mm. say that now, like, the internet would blow up. Just oh, because it's going to blow up. Yeah. But yeah, it's like, no, it's, yeah. the stuff that he used to talk about is no longer acceptable. That's why I right. think he went to, like, yeah. 
Like yeah. he was dissing on Donald Trump. Like he found new material, but it wasn't his material. Like exactly. he can't switch a gimmick like so late in his career. He can't do it like he used to do it. Like he can't. He has to censor himself now. So like I get, that might be the reason why like he's just yeah. he doesn't have that passion anymore because he can't be his like a you know his full self. He has to kind of just mm. kind of fall back right. a little bit. Right, that's probably it. He just doesn't want to be canceled. In the life yeah, of the cancel like yeah. cancel culture is like a really They're big thing culture. now. Yeah. Like everybody's like, "Hey, man, I'm gonna cancel you because I don't agree with you." So uh, yeah. definitely, yeah. It's like I was beefing with some artists from the Ville and like, or my hometown Orville. Like everybody mm. was hating me for the longest time, and it's like because uh, I was the less popular rapper at the time, so like everybody was just dissing on me. But I mean. They like all canceled me out for like maybe six months, but then they all came back. They're like, "Oh, he's popping! Yeah, he's cool." So, hey, all you freaks and geeks out there, we are the Square Round Table. The Square Round Table podcast is brought to you by Science on a Postcard. Science on a Postcard is an online store that specializes in science-themed enamel badges, lanyards, environmentally friendly tote bags, notebooks, and lots more goodies that represent individuality and inclusivity in the scientific community. You could find all these wonderful products on scienceonapostcard.com. And for all our YouTube watchers out there, we will add their website and all their social media platforms in the description below. And now a word from our sponsors. The Square Roundtable podcast is brought to you by Two Photon Art. Two Photon is an art collective whose primary mission is to make science more accessible through science communication and art. Some of their art includes science-themed patches, jewelry, stickers, zines, and clothing, all of which contribute to the inclusivity, equality, and the overall advocacy for human rights in and out of the scientific community. You can find all of these wonderful pieces on twophotonart.com. And for all our YouTube viewers out there, we will add all of their website and social media info in the description below. I mean, is that a big thing you go through? Like, is that um, a big thing? And when coming up with a song or coming up with a topic to write about, is that something that dawns on you? Like, okay, maybe I don't need to say this in that way. Or are you just kind of like, you know what, this is how I'm feeling. This is raw. And I'm going to go ahead and put it out there, regardless of what I get back. I mean, if I'm feeling it, I'm going to say it. It's like if I still got some hard hard feelings towards the rapper that I was mm -hmm. beefing with, like we're cool now, but like there's still like some mixed feelings about him because he said so much. Mm -hmm. So like I still put in some lines like uh, my last song, I said, these R&B niggas got me in their feelings, got no bars and it's apparent, whoop de whoop, you know? So it's like. I, I will I will definitely say what's on my mind. Like I got no filter. Like if you so. do something to offend me, I will say yeah. it. Like I'm not no punk. So I feel it. So, like I if you want to cancel me, cancel me. I'll punk <laughs> hey, <laughs> maybe that's the way you got to do it. Sometimes just be like, hey, yeah, I said what definitely. I said. Like is what it is. Definitely, because it's it's something to be said. Because we had a um a uh, interview. Well, not really an interview. We just had kind of a um a review actually about a logic logic's most recent album and it's really something to be said about a rapper that likes the people please you know what i'm saying like it kind of gets to where it's cool and that's great that that's your stilo and you just want to be positive and you want to keep everybody happy but after a while that gets kind of gimmicky and it's like i feel like I, the, your rap isn't exciting you know what i'm saying like it's kind of the polar opposite the same thing that made Eminem's groundbreaking stuff groundbreaking was that when you heard an Eminem track or you heard an Eminem track was coming out, you was watching TRL. I don't know if you were watching. You were about like 18, so I don't know. <laughs> I kind of aged myself. <laughs> 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 Yeah, so I mean, when when that Eminem track, you were like, "Oh snap, what is he gonna say?" Like, I don't feel that way, and I'm a fan of Logic, but when I listen yeah. to a Logic track, I don't have that same kind of response. I'm not like, because I already know he's just gonna be like, "Peace, love, and positivity. Everybody's cool, rainbow, sunshine, blah blah blah." Like, it's just that's yeah. pretty much what I'm gonna get. Yeah. And like I said, that peak, you kind of want to have, I guess, that middle ground because you don't want to be too standoffish to where people just like yeah i'm not gonna i don't even want to hop on a track with that dude because he's crazy and then you don't want to be like so mm. everything is wonderful because your rap is going to be boring you know so that's mm. that's just yeah that's just a weird thing man like just 
when figuring out what kind of rapper you want to be, you know? Yeah. All right. Yeah. And I think it's funny because uh, I've hopped on a lot of features and a lot of the features I've dropped some diss lines and the artist noticed it, but they didn't say anything because like, that's just the person I am. Like, I'm going to drop a diss line in a song. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, I could be dissing freaking Melina Trump. I don't care. I got to drop something. Like, something yeah. spicy. So I feel it. Yeah. No, I mean, and that's who you are. And that's people, and people understand that when they, you know, come to the table. So they're just like, yeah, you know, like as soon as he get on the track, at some point during his rap, you know, he's going to say something that's, you know, this is somebody or a little dig here, you know, so, and that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. Because that, honestly, that's um, a part of the game that I think besides like kind of Drake breathing some life into it, kind of. And then uh, you kind of had that little thing with Eminem and MGK, you know, that. Oh, yeah. And, of course, we talked about our girl, the greatest rapper of all time, Taylor Swift. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> besides, <laughs> but, <laughs> besides them kind of, you know, they, the whole competitive spirit of hip hop has been kind of taken out a little bit, you know, like that mm. whole that whole edge, like, of, ooh, you know, what's such and such going to say? You know, like that that whole thing has been kind of, for um i guess to kind of bring in the little nas x's and the this and the that that's what you've kind of substituted it for and that's kind of my gripe with uh hip-hop right now it's just like i don't see that competitive spirit so much anymore so like a beef? i mean my so like a, you want more beefs or you want more like like what do you just like i don't want no like I just wanted to be like, you know, somebody gets on a track and just like, yeah, you know, I'm that guy, you know, I'm the best and here's why, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want it to be just like, you know, either it's really niche, like, you know, like I keep bringing up Lil Nas X, but it's extremely niche, you know, it only really fits, like Marcus ain't finna sit and listen to, you know what I'm saying, all time role. I'm not really, I liked it, but you know, it's it's not my vibe you know what i'm saying like the older demographic that's not on tiktok and uh you know like musically or twitter all the time whatever nine times out of ten we're not gonna listen to that because that's just like not the vibe but you know i want to get something that can uh just kind of satisfy my hunger you know a little bit because it's like i'm not that old but it's like when i listen to i when i hop on um award shows and all that and they're just like, yeah, you know, Flip Flop wins award for song of the year. I'm like, who is that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Flip Flop. I'm like, who What's are these world? people? I'm just, I'm just, like, right, I'm just yeah. like being honest. I'm like, who are these guys? Like, I do not know who these people are. So it's like, besides me listening, and like, you, you said it yourself, D, it's like, you keep naming the same guys when we talk about well, who's killing it in the rap game. Oh, Drake is doing well. Kendrick is doing well. Kendrick ain't dropped the album in two years. All right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> who? Is that what? No, it's, been two. It's, been, it's been two. It's almost been three years. Yeah, it's yeah, been close to the three. That was 2017, right? They put out 2017. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It was about then. So I'm just like, and I, I appreciate the little bit of uh, uh, stuff that we're getting from, you know, J. Cole's guys over mm. at, um, over at uh uh it's dreamville uh, right what is it the, yeah dreamville yeah the dreamville guys but you know they're they can only do so much you know what i'm saying yeah. so it's just like we need we need a resurgence of something you know we can't keep relying on the same guys to you know keep feeding us you know all the same stuff so basically what i'm trying to say you know dic is like bruh we need you, bro. Like, we need right. you to get out here <laughs> yeah. and drop some like, fire, like, bro. Drop that heat, man. Yeah. Right, man. Be it's a like, out here, bro. Like, drop the yeah. heat, bro. No, I mean, definitely. other than what? Pusha T, Drake, MGK, and uh, Eminem. And then it was Drake and X for a minute. But, like, if you go back further than that, like, can you really name, like, another beef that was really up there? Like, it's yeah. just been it's been there's been a shortage there's been a shortage, been a real really big shortage everybody man. wants to be best friends now everybody yeah. wants to be best friends like, like, yeah, like, like we're besties I need, I need let's go shopping Ether, I need some of that Nas Ether like he did Jay-Z man that's what I need I need a diss like that man, yeah. I need, I need like, this 
<laughs> yeah, the exactly. biggest beef I remember. The biggest beef I remember is uh, with a uh, Eminem and MGK. And that's a problem. That, that, that's a yeah, huge that problem. Was, like, people were talking <laughs> about that for a week. They were like, oh, who won? And then everybody would be like, oh, Eminem won. And they'd be like, MGK won. I'm like, eh. Well, obviously Eminem won because my boy yeah. MGK don't win. He done dropped a rock album and then he's an actor now. <laughs> This <laughs> man don't even rap no more. I'm just like, right. I'm just like hey, bro. Like hey, he put, he put out one more kind of rock, uh, rock rap album, and then he just jumped the ship, you know? Jump, he jumped ship, and it's just like, wow, really, bro? Mm-hmm. On the tails of an Eminem diss, you jump ship? Like, okay. Yeah, he he yeah. might come back. He might come back to it. You never yeah. know. You know? He yeah. said it's 5666 in the morning and dipped. <laughs> man, <laughs> for real, bro. It's just like, uh-huh. yo. So at the end of the day, though, man, I'm just like, like I said, I like we talked about before when Taylor Swift, you know, what I'm saying sweet Taylor Swift is the biggest <laughs> like this Lord right now. It's a problem, dude. Like yeah. it's an issue. We got to yeah. fix this, man. So, you know, uh, going forward, man, we're going to be looking for you out there to fix this problem. Yeah. Man. Like we need you like <laughs> for real. Like, and you're only 18 right now. You got time, man, definitely. And you're making big moves already so young, man. Like, it, really, at this point, and this is, like, all jokes aside, man, sky's the limit for you, 100%. Yes. Oh, I appreciate it. I, yeah, I already yeah. Googled you, bro. <laughs> right. I already time, Googled bro. you. Big, same here, big time. You know, when uh, trying to do a little bit of research for the podcast, definitely, man. You know, just – Looked you up and you know saw what you got and like I said I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing definitely yeah, um, mm-hmm. and yeah. um, I just want you to for anybody else out there you know that's your age and older you know what I'm saying everybody there's no age limit on chasing your dreams you know like we find that out just by looking at people and that have been in every, any kind of career it doesn't matter whether you're trying to be an actor rapper musician anything it's you know there's no age limit on it so i just wanted you for all of our viewers out there and all of our listeners just like what would you say to somebody that's like you that's grinding trying to make it and probably just hasn't uh either they've had like a stop in the road or they haven't gotten to where you're at yet as far as your career is concerned like what's some like advice you would give to them well first off i would say don't do cocaine Yeah. That, oh, that's a that, that makes sense. Yeah. Great advice. <laughs> yeah, number one on the top list, don't do cocaine. That's, that's number one. <laughs> yeah, definitely don't do that. Um, don't abuse any, like, hard drugs, even weed. Like, there's a limit. And, um, I mean, just don't give up, you know? Like, there's going to be times where you don't see a light at the end of the tunnel. Like, For sure. I just, I'm still <laughs> in that, like, middle of the tunnel phase, but... I can definitely see like there is something if I keep working and that's why I am still working because I believe deep down that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. So just don't give up. Definitely. That's, that's awesome. Well, you heard it from, from DIC itself, definitely beautifully put, you know, you, you put in that work, you know, there's, you don't see it at first, but then you keep pushing in that, you see that little light at the end of the tunnel and it keeps opening up and opening up and before you know it, you're there, you know? So, oh, yeah. yeah. So and, good uh, stuff, man. And, and just, you know, before we close out, I want to just say one of my favorite quotes. Um, and it's actually from a, from a film, you know, it's from Star Wars, but it's one of the most realest quotes ever. And it, <laughs> it said, it says, your focus determines your reality. So, you know, if you just keep focusing on stuff, and, you know, and you really, you know, hone into it, you know, that's going to be, that's your world, your reality, your goals, you know, that's just everyday life. You know, if you focus and you, you trying to hit the, you know, one thing or, or over here, it don't matter what it is. As long as you focus, man, you right there. So, like you said, do not give up because, you know, that focus and determination, mm-hmm. like you said, you in the middle of that tunnel. But you see that little peephole of like that little light shining through. And the more you stay on, you know, on that path and stay focused, it's just gonna come open and open up and then there go that light, man. So yes. For sure. It's just catching. Yes, 
That's a that's a good one, Marcus. I really yeah. like that one. Bro. Hey, yeah. Oh yeah. Star Wars and, um, all day. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> but um, and uh, and another thing, uh, DIC, uh, could you share with us your process of making music? Like, what do you use to make your songs? Um, I use uh my phone for a microphone, and then I use. Oh wow. Uh, huh? But I use my phone for a microphone, and I use a uh, what's it called? Uh, I use Tune Me to record, and then I use. It depends. What's it called? I can't think of the editing software, but um, BandLab. I use BandLab to mix and master my music, so oh, that's wow. why it turns out okay and not so trendy. Oh, that's hey, what's up. that's yeah, cool, that's man. Why, that's cool. It's another re- reason why I rely so heavy on my lyrics because I can't make mumble rap and make it sound good on a phone. It won't work. <laughs> hey, won't work. have you tried? <laughs> right. right. Trust me. No, I've been to the point to where I'm like, I got it. Blah, 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 blah. It just don't work. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's what's up, man. That's like, that's good stuff too. Like, like I said, you don't have to. And that's another, um, a good little nugget, man. Like everybody thinks you got to have, all this ridiculous equipment and and that's part of the excuse you know they're like well i would do this but i don't have microphone i would do this but i don't have you know the noise canceling wall whatever's everybody always makes some kind of excuse man but you know that's that's dope man yeah Yeah. use what you had use what you have exactly and you you're killing it like i said i listened to your songs and i couldn't I, I couldn't, couldn't tell. tell. I couldn't tell <laughs> at all. Yeah, the production is really good. I thought you were in the studio, man. I thought you were in the studio. I appreciate that. No, definitely. A hundred percent, man. And look, it has been completely a treat to have you on tonight, man. Like, we've appreciated you joining it and kicking it with us. You know what I'm saying? It's been really fun, man. Yeah. But uh, this... Yeah. I, I just want you to go ahead and just do some promotion, man. Like, what's, like, hidden on the streets right now, man? Like, as far as you're concerned, like, Tom and everybody on YouTube, what you got going on, if you got other rappers that you know of that are killing it right now, promote them. Like, what's, you know, what's the, you know, what's the news, man? What you got to talk about? I mean, really, I got uh, the dope album, like, probably my best work up to date. Like, I promise you, this is... Like I, I can listen to this on repeat over and over just from the story it tells. But I got the Ville dropping in November. That's gonna be like my first real album. And um, there's a couple of dope rappers from my hometown. They they go by Trenchview. It's like six. No, it's eight uh, rappers total. But oh, like wow. there's some good singers and like they stick to SoundCloud only. But they got some real talent and I uh, I think they can make it if they have the right people looking at them. But I was beefing with them for a minute, so I feel weird. I feel weird about doing this, but I, they got some real talent, so I got to shout them out. For sure, for sure. Yeah, no, that's, that's good stuff. Check them out. Okay, cool. We'll uh, definitely drop that in the description, man. And uh, as far as your social oh, yeah. media is concerned, and where, like, where can everybody find you, man? Uh, you can find me on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play at dicd.i.c. You can find me on Instagram, Demon in Control. That's D-I-C, long ways. <laughs> and uh, you can find me on Facebook, D-I-C. And um, Twitter, uh, Imaginable Entertainment. And you can also find my record label Instagram, Imaginable Entertainment. It's inactive now, but give it about a month or two, maybe three, and I'll be right back to where it was before. All right, for sure. That is all awesome stuff. And uh, yeah, everybody everybody on YouTube, we will put all of DIC's information in the description below. You can catch us on YouTube on Friday at any time at the Square Roundtable. Uh, Yeah, the Square Roundtable on YouTube. And give us a like if you like it. Subscribe and uh, hit the notification bell and also comment. Hit that bell. We love to read comments. Yes, so much. Yes, we love to respond, man. Please hit them comments up. Let us know what you think. Definitely, like, you know, we love reaching out and talking to everybody that, you know, has been on this journey with us and is supporting us. You know, we appreciate all of it, guys. And, you know, once again, 
Uh, my name is Chad Singleton, and everybody, including our awesome guest tonight, go ahead and introduce yourselves one more time. Uh, Dimitri. I am Josh Singleton. Marcus. Uh, DIC. All right, guys, this has been the Square Round Table. We are out. Peace. Peace. Peace, bro.